Koopman is a 7th grade student at Amana Academy. He is going to be a positive change by raising awareness on the Lystet Law and CTE brain injuries. He will make a connection to our EL design principles, responsibility for learning as well as empathy and caring. Hello, my name is Ry Koopman and I'll be talking about CTE awareness. I am a 7th grader at Amana Academy Public Charter School in Alpharetta, Georgia. CTE is a degenerative brain disease that what is called, caused by high impact sports. I would like to pass legislation um, in 2013 to protect, protect kids who play football in our state. When I was younger, I always wanted to play football on a football team, but my parents wouldn't let me or my brother due to risk of the head and neck and back injuries. I really didn't understand what they meant and begged them to play. Although I don't play on a football team, my father my, and my brother always play and throw a ball in the street. Um, we love football and love the sport of it, especially the New England Patriots and my favorite quarterback, Tom Brady. In 2012, Tom Brady Sr. was interviewed by Sport Network and talked about his son's football career. He explained that he waited for his son, Tom, to play football when he was 14 years old because he didn't think he, Tom was physically developed to play the sport yet. He, um, he also told his son, Tom, it's the same reason I wouldn't let him throw a curveball until that age. I told him, if I see you throw a curve, I will pull you right off this field, and he knew I meant it. He meant that Tom could hurt his arm. Tom Brady's dad also said that he would be very hesitant at letting his son start playing football two decades ago after what he knows today. He all, we all know Tom Brady has been lucky, but others have not been. I want to share a story with you about Zachary Lystead and how he impacts sports and youth. In 2006, when Zachary was 13 years old, he played for a middle school football team in the state of Washington. He severed, he severed a big blow to the head in the first quarter of the game. His coach took him out of the game and then put him back into the game in third quarter. After receiving another hard hit in the third quarter, Zachary received life-threatening injuries and brain damage. Had he not returned into the game in the third quarter, he would have probably been okay now. Zachary has been quoted as saying, the same reason I'm here is to help people. Zachary and his family and attorneys have worked with NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell and NCAA President Mark Emmerich and are urging all states to support legislation to reduce, to reduce youth concussions. Georgia is one of the only six states that has not passed the Lystad Law, which is referred to as the Georgia's Return to Play Act, or HB 673. Georgia needs to pass HB 673 in 2013 to keep kids safe who play sports. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which is CTE, is a long-term of effect of repeated head concussions. According to Dr. Cantu from Boston University, Kids should wait until they are 14 in order to play high impact sports because their brain and nerves are not developed enough yet. He has seen brains of 17 and 18 year olds that have, not have, that have early signs of CTE. Athletes at risk for CTE are boys and girls that play high impact sports such as football, boxing, soccer, lacrosse, skiing, and wrestling. CTE has even been seen in military veterans who have returned from war. Let's talk about evidence of CTE. CTE is a progressive degenerative brain disease after, with a history of repetitive head trauma. CTE was first described by New Jersey pathologist Harrison Martland as punch drunk syndrome. Much research is being now done by Dr. Anne McKee and her peers at Boston University 
who have confirmed 51 cases of CTE. The downside of the research is that CTE will only be diagnosed after studying the tissue after death. Uh, when an athlete, like in football play, gets repeated hits to the head, which is a concussion, his brain seems to change. The brain begins to degenerate and build up an abnormal protein called the tau protein. As you can see on the far left, it is a slide of a, 40, um, of a normal man's brain tissue. The one on the, in the middle is a 45-year-old football player, John Grimsley, who played for the Miami Dolphins and died of an accidental gunshot wound. He had received nine concussions in his career and was an avid hunter. His wife said he suffered from memory loss. The third slide is a 73-year-old boxer with severe dementia, and you can see the dark stained towel right here. According to Dr. Robert Stern, co-director of CSTE, a large study of over 250 living athletes, including 60 NFL football players, is underway to study their current lives and to examine the, their brains when they die. Symptoms of CTE are confusion, dizziness, poor judgment, deafness, and memory loss. The education is one key to prevent kids from getting a brain injury when they are young and preventing CTE down the line when playing contact sports in Georgia. The CDC has a program called the Heads Up Concussion and Youth Sports Initiative to prevent rec to, and recognize to respond to concussions. The impact test is also used in the youth sport. It is a computerized exam that is used to diagnose concussions by coaches and trainers. Um, yeah. Uh, once a concussion is diagnosed, only a medical professional should develop a plan of action. And a w only time is the thing that will solve it, what, that will heal concussions. Some doctors say that it takes up to three weeks. The impact test is also used in youth sports. It is a computerized exam that is used to diagnose concussions by coaches and trainers. What can athletes do to prevent themselves? They can educate themselves and know the signs of a concussion. Coaches and parents need to know that if a kid appears stunned, forgets a play, or shows personality changes, they might have a concussion. Facts we know. Over 88% of the United States has passed a Lystead law protecting youth from head injuries, but Georgia has not. Massachusetts reported 3,000 concussions or other head injuries by 164 middle school and high schools in 2010. At one school, Boston College High, a powerhouse football school, over 76 concussions were reported in one season, grades 7 through 12. Last weekend, there were, were th reported of three professional quarterbacks who got concussions during games. More facts we know. The Lysted Law, which is known as HB 673, or the Georgia Re Return to Play Act, never made it to the House floor. People had disagreements over who would pay for coach concussions training and who was liable for injuries. I think we should have people. We need to pass this law because these kids are our future, and these people will be our future lives. The Georgia Return to Play Act will be voted on in 2013 and is critical to protect all youth who play sports in the state of Georgia. This law will prevent youth from brain injuries and long-term effects such as chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which are devastating. Please contact your representative today and ask them to vote yes on HB 673. If you live in Alpharetta, call Chuck Martin. If you live in Milton, call Jan Jones. If you live in Roswell, call Henry Geisner. Or you can visit the website www.house.ga.gov slash representatives. Call today to have HB 673 passed. Thank you.